This video was brought to you by Marcus Beal, Elbil Mac, Abadur Planner, Stoltenberg, Camp Power, and Beal Componente. Yo, what's up? We're now in the garage getting ready for another road trip to Hamsedal. You know, all the other cars have failed to make it there and back again without charging, except for Tesla Model 3 Highland. So will this car be able to make it there? So lately I've been working on my pronunciation. It is not Merck, it is not Mercedes. It is called Mercedes. Wait, wait, Mercedes. I think that's that's it, right? Wait, let's see, try again. Mercedes, Mercedes. No, 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 no. It's called Mercedes. Yeah, Mercedes Benz. But most people just should call it Mercedes. That is supposed to be the correct German pronunciation. So next time I have to try to work on my Porsche pronunciation. But yeah, seriously, I think. Porsche, they probably didn't want to lend me a car because I didn't pronounce the name correctly. So, all right, but anyway, so this is the Mercedes Benz EQE SUV 43 AMG 4 Matic. <laughs> Freaking long name, man. But it has 476 horsepower, overdrive, of course. It's a beast on wheels. It's freaking heavy, 2,720 kilograms. And can it make it to, well, okay, let me show you. Stop talking. Let me show you. Can we do the, oh yeah, it's a bit smutzish, but that's uh, my middle name. So I've been preheating. We had 100%, no, 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 we had 99%. Okay, it's hopefully charging up the car to 100% again. But you see that it claims 422 kilometers, best case, and then 366, right? Okay, oh, it will finish in six minutes. Okay, we'll wait. Very, very, very important that we get full charge before we go. Because right now, the car estimates that if we will go from Yesheim to Hamsedal, Shell Hamsedal, that's going to be the turnaround point, we will arrive with 35%. And then for the round trip, we will arrive with minus 23%. Uh oh, oh, that doesn't look very good. But maybe this is based on previous hammerings. Hmm. So, well, based on my range test, we should be able to go there. So we'll see then. We'll wait a couple of minutes until they finish charging. And then off we go. All right, we're on the move. So um, yes, now we are getting close to Rua. And uh, so, you know, this is how the, the rule, that is the rules I set goes, is that I want to try to make this test as realistic as possible. And you will see here soon that we have a speed limit sign. I'm not sure if they will be able to catch on the camera. Yeah, I think that it's an 80 zone and I cruise at 80 on this speedometer. So for once I will actually follow the speed limits, right? Well, except for that, the GPS speed is only 75. <laughs> for this car, it is like this. Most other cars, if you cruise at 80, it should be at least be 77. And then Tesla is actually the least fair, but the most unfair because they tend to be at 78, 79 kilometers per hour at 80. So yeah, now maybe it goes up a little bit, uh, maybe as the tire heats up. But so is it. Consumption is 253 watt hour per kilometer right now. I did the math that we can do the, the whole uh, trip without charging if the consumption is below 204 watt. No, no, shit. This happens because uh, the camera is blocking. The, the camera, camera can't, cannot see my eyes anymore. Oh, sorry, that, yeah. But, yeah, so we need 204 and we are currently at 259, but it should stabilize eventually, right? Plus, that I think we are at higher elevation now. I'm gonna check something. If we go here, this is pretty cool uh, as an additional feature. If we go to off-road here, the off-road screen shows a lot of cool and useful information for off-roading, but it also shows elevation. And we started at 200 meters over sea level from Yesheim, so we have gone uphill. This is why the consumption is higher. So eventually, what goes up must go come down, right? Yeah. And another thing I'll show you is that uh, it's been sitting in the garage overnight, so the battery temperature is... Well, it was at 9 degrees Celsius, now it's 8 degrees. So it will probably just keep cooling down. We will see how that uh, progresses as we go also. So now I'm just going to enjoy the... Okay, sorry, the, the white balance is a bit off. But enjoy the nice digital lights, yeah. I mean, they are wonderful, quite strong, but almost like the smart. They they turn off quite late or I get flashed at so many times. And even on these roads, not only on the motorway, but also on these roads, man, they, I get flashed at because they don't turn off in time or something. And they probably appear to be quite strong towards oncoming cars. So yeah, it's to the point where I 
I don't look straight into the oncoming traffic. I usually look down here somewhere so that I don't get blinded. Dead, 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 dead. We are here at the turnaround point. Yeah, I just make this the turnaround point, the gas station. So, um, yeah, now we have 45% battery left. Oh, is that going to be enough to get back home? Consumption is 222 watt hour per kilometer. And you know, when we started, the battery was at eight, eight to nine degrees Celsius. It has cooled down to six degrees, but that's not too much. I suspect that maybe there is no heat scavenging here or the, the battery. Uh, the car does not, cannot suck heat from the battery to heat up the cabin, unlike Tesla, or I believe even yeah, the Korean cars supposedly can also do that, and also uh, I believe the MEB cars do that. So um, yeah, and um, now if I navigate back to yeah, this happens. If I try to navigate back to Yesheim, it will automatically add the charging stop. Uh, I'm not sure where. So yeah, Sokna. He wants me to charge at Sokna and add. 17 percent and then just to arrive at two percent so huh so the car claims that we will arrive at minus 16 percent right something right minus 15 percent hmm okay uh let's head back soon i'll just go to the restroom here i haven't stopped in i haven't peed in three hours yeah three hours and ten minutes so um let's uh but but okay but i will not eat over here i try the burger here i think we'll we'll go back and we'll try soccer okay. key burger at Ghoul instead. We are now at Ghoul and yeah I restarted, I, saw, I reset the trip meet a little bit late while we were moving but 104 watt hour per kilometer. Okay, what did the cons uh, total consumption? Oh, the total consumption went down 209. <sighs> We're getting closer to the 204 we need then to get back to Yesheim. Well, okay, the test ain't over yet, but now this part of the test is to camp here at some spot for, I don't know, at least half an hour while I'm having some food. And then, yeah, this time I will have food at Circle K. So uh, uh, let me just show you that. The car still estimates that, yeah, well, at least it's slightly better. First, it wanted me to top up 17%, wasn't it? Now it wants me to add 15% to arrive at 3%. Ah, uh, okay, okay. But um, it would be a slight disadvantage because now we have to stay still and the car will cool down. But it is only plus half degree Celsius outside. So that is, of course, better versus, for example, the ID7. <laughs> it was minus 20 at some places. Okay, the battery has cooled down to 5 degrees Celsius, all right? So let's uh, camp over here for a bit. So the spring is definitely coming, yeah. I feel like it's not super crazy wind anymore, so that's good. And then uh, how the heck did I end up here? Well, because it's 8 in the morning and pretty much everything is closed on a place like this. If this was Oslo or a bigger city, yeah, maybe. There's even, you see over there, there's also a Thai and sushi restaurant, which is also closed. I start on Google, most stuff is open around 10 or 11 or even noon. But this is open. But it's actually closed at night, so okay over here. So yeah, let's uh, try to get some, maybe some burgers here. Oh wait, wait. waffle, half price. Oh, <laughs> we have to get some waffle. Okay, so they had pizza in the menu here, but unfortunately they were out of cheese, so you can't make 
pizza without cheese. So that's why I went for waffle. No, okay, just kidding. This is the dessert. Waffle with brown cheese. Yeah, this cost normally 37 nook, around 3.5 euros. But now it's on half price. Welcome to Norway. And then here, super burger. They only had 200 gram patties left. So yeah, this is with uh, bacon and cheese. And also, it might be different the way Circle K makes it, depending on which location it is. What you hear back there is actually studded uh, shoes. <laughs> okay, let's try. So I can show you, I should do this Sony style. So I'm going to take out the burger and then show you guys what does this consist of. We have, look at this, oh yeah, we have burger. No, we have, we have some bacon there. Oh yeah, and melted cheese. We have some fresh vegetables and then some sauce there. But oh, this is a bit unusual. Normally you will get a barbecue. Oh, I think it's a barbecue sauce on top and then regular sauce on the bottom. Let's try. And then normally when I look at Sonny's videos, he, the, the cameraman will move in to closer to him once he takes the bite. Since the camera is stationary, I can mimic that by moving myself. Mm. It's juicy. It gets the freshness of the vegetables. I have to wipe here, otherwise it triggers your OCD. And it actually tastes good. Yeah. It doesn't taste as dry as the shell burgers. Hmm. All right, we're back in the car. So, yeah, how was the burger? If I have to choose between Shell Burger and Circle K Burger, I will actually go for Circle K Burger. I feel like both the Shell over here at Ghoul and also the Shell at Hemsdal, the Shell Burgers are a bit dry. I'm not sure. I had some really good Shell Burger at Lier. But that was a while ago. Maybe they changed the way they make the burgers. I don't know, but actually I feel like the burger you get in different locations, even on the same chain, like Circle K, they will vary based on location. Even the 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 um, uh, what's it called again? The taco salad that uh, you know the you know the big Mexican I call. They also vary on each each location, but they even vary on the same station at at Dahl. I used to go to. It depends who's making it, who just has that working shift there. So, yeah, it shouldn't be like that. I claim that. I mean, I I, I think the food should be consistent. Like, no matter where you go. At the at the McDonald's, you will always get the same shitty burgers at whatever country you are eating at McDonald's. <laughs> it should be like that also for gas stations, right? Let me see. It's almost nine now. We came here a little bit past uh, eight. I think it was eight fifteen, eight twenty. So that's a forty minute stop. I think that's good enough. So let's see now. We are at forty percent. What happened to the battery temperature while we were gone? Five degrees still. Okay, right. Um, I think we just uh, go now. Also, I noticed that. Even if we were parked here for 40 minutes with the heater off and it's around zero degrees Celsius outside, the car didn't really cool down much because, you know, it's a German tank. It has been built like a tank. Yeah, unlike those tiny puny Teslas. <laughs> okay, well, we shouldn't, uh, we shouldn't taunt Tesla too much because the Tesla didn't manage to get back to Yesheim. We don't know if the, the Mercedes, wait, the, the Mercedes can go. Okay, let's go. getting close to Bromma and uh, yeah I have to give up trying to get back to Yesheim. Now I navigated to Shell Rua and is this a coincidence <laughs> that uh, the car estimates we will have a Shell Rua with 2% just like well we just happened to end up with 2% with a Polestar 2 and also uh, ID7. <laughs> well okay but uh, yeah the consumption now is now 209 watt hour per kilometer it needs to be lower than 204 if you can make it back to uh, Yesheim. So um, right now, it doesn't seem like we can make it. But 
I'll show you something else here. If we go here to uh, uh, performance, you see that now we are in comfort mode. You can see it here. This is something that if you are a Mercedes guy, you know this. There's a little C there. That means comfort mode. And I've been driving a comfort mode, which I prefer. And in comfort mode, it will use the rear motor. But if I press this and then I switch over to Sport Plus, you will see that it switches over to front wheel drive, but not permanent all wheel drive, like maybe some other cars will in sport mode. So this is quite, uh, quite strange behavior. Why would you do that? And then if we switch back to comfort mode, like this takes a couple of seconds and then zoop, back to rear wheel drive. Uh, okay. <laughs> now at uh, Hegemon there's an airport over here actually but yeah so we're getting close now to Shell Rua Rua whatever you call it 22 kilometers away now the car is 5% at the arrival okay that's good consumption is now 209 watt hour per kilometer it's still too high yeah it, so it seems like we will never ever be able to go down to 204 so um, all right but uh, let me see one thing I'll check here no no I should every time okay I'll show you here that the battery temperature still stays at 6 degrees Celsius even though it has been cold outside or not super cold but yeah so and also it, it seems like this battery has uh, low internal resistance which means that how the heck can I maintain the temperature in the battery it's not from internal resistance from discharging it I suspect that the motors have been feeding the battery with heat so it stays at 6 degrees so that's good because um, also you see here we have 80 percent power limit now so but at 11 percent so hopefully we don't get any surprises with limp mode like we had with uh, id7 <laughs> because soon enough now we will enter the 90 zone and the new stretch with well at least they call it class b motorway yeah can, can you see when they see there you can see it on the sign there there is a there's a sign of a car i don't know if you see it there and that means that it is technically a motorway, but it's not an autobahn. But you are not allowed to walk on this road, and you're not also not allowed to bicycle on this road. There is actually there is a sign under here, but it's only in Norwegian. It says "forbud for gående" or "cyklende." Yeah, walking and bicycling not allowed. And I wonder also it may be moped or some whatever it's called. You know, they are also not allowed here. We are now at Shell Rua, the bailout point. And yes, I decided to stop here. It's not safe to proceed because we're down to 6%. GOM claims 23 kilometers. We managed to drive 392 kilometers. Here is the consumption. So you add these two together, it'll be 415 kilometers. That is still okay for winter run, right? Uh, but we cannot go to the next charger, which is over there. Uh, it's called Circle K Harva Krysset. That's still not Yesheim even, but in order to get there, I calculated we have to average 157 watt hour per kilometer and that's not going to happen. So we have to plug in here. All right, let's see. And also, look here. Oh, I'm going to show you something. Okay, let me see. The battery is at 8 degrees Celsius now. It heated up a little bit towards the end. And then the, the elevation over here is actually 258. So huh, there is a little bit of potential energy on the way down, but okay. All right, let's see. Ooh, 107 kilowatt. Okay, <laughs> that is pretty good for a cold battery. Yeah, but let me see. Do we go faster? Mm, no. Okay, well, it's slowly ramping up. Wait, so this is faster than Polestar. Polestar, when it bailed out here, it charged at only 80 kilowatt. Uh, Tesla ended up actually <laughs> in uh, Yesheim or very close. Then Tesla received over 160 kilowatt from it, remember. It didn't peak 180 kilowatt also with cold battery and then the last car i tested id7 oh i don't remember i think it took more right was it 150 or 130 or something hmm. yeah so okay now we just charge <laughs> all right now we have more than enough juice to go home so uh yeah this time i will not slow poke yeah we just hammer it normal well i mean not too fast but still 
going under the speed limit. So there's a leaf in front here that I have to hammer. So let's see now. Let's get ready. Switch over to sport mode and then. Oh, yeah. wait. The, the, the noise is way too tame. Listen. Uh, uh, huh? You can barely hear it, man. That, no, no, no. That, uh, that's not good, man. Let's switch it off. Let's go back to comfort mode. Okay. Uh, I need Brabus back, man. <laughs> back home i played around with some well the closest to off-roading i have there's a slight hill there this part here is soggy and pretty good grip there we have a little bit of ice even so see the traces i should try again so you see if you go okay if you do this if you go forward or go backwards you have the regular 360 camera which just works as a regular 360 camera you see it switches to front there and then you go back it's switches to the back so that makes sense right but i'll show you something interesting here if you go out of this screen and you go into the off-road instead and there is also a front camera here but this is slightly different because here now suddenly if you try to go there there, there, there is an indic there's an indicator whether you're slipping or not see that it's like it's not the part of the camera just like the car is telling you that you're slipping. And if I go out of... Oh, but he can climb like a goat. Well, until this point. Okay, now we've, we've, we hit, we hit, reach the limit. See now? But if you go out of this, well, we have lots of cool information. Like, if I start... I think we are at 9% nine, 9 grade and we have 4 degrees this is different by the way this is degrees angle this is great they are there <laughs> but we are slightly tilted that way and you see now the power distribution wait how is this what does this mean by the way is this torque versus check surroundings what come on let's go no 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 don't bring no what the heck man? It actually cannot get up that slope. I don't know why it's slipping. Why it is it? Is it too heavy? It's too fat. It's too fat. Come on, come on. Okay, okay, okay. I got an idea. I got an idea. No, no, stop that. Okay, we have to be super gentle. No, no, I forgot. We have we have a setting here. Go here. Go into slippery. Yeah! Okay, let's try again, let's try again. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay. Okay. No, shit, it didn't help. <laughs> okay, let's try here. What is going on here? Come on, come on. No, no, I, I, oh, I think that my mistake is that the wheel is angled. You don't want to angle your wheel steering wheel. You want to go straight. Go straight instead. And this this as it also indicates the, the wheel angles. You want to have zero degrees. I think then it is easier to climb up. Gently. Nope. Seems like it doesn't matter. <laughs> you wanna well, I, I know you wanna you wanna you wanna jiggle. You wanna jiggle a bit. Yukke, yukke from the bokke. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. It can't get up that hill. I don't know what's up with this. It's just too slippery here. Maybe it's time to bring out Millennium Falcon. Uh, okay, or, or maybe not. Uh, it's rear wheel drive only. Not gonna, yeah. All right, Isabelle is now sleeping in the garage again <laughs> and the car is charging. So yeah, you know, I feel like I need to explain for some people, like, you know what? Some people were, were all outright rude when they comment about, or when they didn't know jack shit about why 
babies or toddlers sleep outside. So let me explain. I also didn't know about this, but many, actually many, many, many people in Norway, it's really common practice, not only in Norway, but also some other Nordic countries. I wonder if it's even Sweden and Finland to let this, the kids sleep outside, even when they are newborn, or maybe not completely newborn, but um, when they are still baby and even toddlers, they sleep outside in the, in the uh, baby stroller. Actually, even at kindergarten in Norway, it's common practice to let the kids sleep outside, even during winter. The only policy they have is that if it goes below minus 10 degrees Celsius, then they can sleep out, uh, inside. So I found out, I don't know, you know, I found out that our daughter sleeps really well when she sleeps in the, in the baby stroller and if she's outside. If she sleeps inside, she usually sleeps maybe just one hour, sometimes half an hour in the daytime, and then she wakes up. But in the baby stroller outside, she can sleep two, three hours to the point where we had to wake her up. So that's just, that's just the way it is. If you have never heard it before, well, then you learn something new today. <laughs> But uh, what should I say about the EQ then? Well, it is a comfortable car to drive on long trips. It has good space, roughly the same as the Model Y. And, well, okay, it is a bit thirsty. You know, if I had the chance, I should try a Model Y. How about that? Because in the past, we have done it, this with like, sedans or whatever. You know, it was Model 3, it was ID7 and Polestar 2. So, yeah, what about trying some SUVs or crossovers then? But uh, at least for now, I haven't tried to actively borrow a car on the sole purpose of going to Hamsedal. I just happen to have whatever press car I have, and then if, if it qualifies, then yeah. I think that's going to be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching, and talk to you later.